sure whether I should be excited about this, but I am somewhat excited about this because I'm going to do something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. But because my preferred method of growing anything in my collection is Lekka and self-watering, I've never done the switch. But clearly, look at my Cygnotus Jumbo Mickey. Oops, ouch, yes. This is not looking good. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see how this works out. I am going in a completely different direction. I'm going rogue, so to speak, with my Cygnotis Jumbo Mickey because, well, not just because of what you're seeing here, but I've always wanted to try the PET method inspired by Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, who I absolutely admire, adore, and I'm in awe of, of all his catacetinae. And very recently, he posted a video about how the Cygnotus species just absorb their back bulbs very, very quickly. So I wasn't too concerned when I saw this happening, despite the fact that at the beginning of the season, they were beautiful, lush orbs kinds of pseudobulbs. That wouldn't concern me, but what is concerning me right now, and we are so late in the season, is the fact that I'm not really seeing any progress on the roots here. And that's worrisome. Now, I know that with these little structures, I probably have enough to save the orchid and she'll be fine, she's gonna be extremely set back, but I have no question, no doubt at all that I will be able to save her, and then next year we start with a new growth, but she will be in the PET method. So I wanna get her out of the pot, and I want, I've already prepared my PET little containers here with my holes in the back. Everything is very familiar up until now. Got lava rock, the inert media at the base for the water reservoir and my steak, which I sellotape because the steak is of wood and I don't want it to mold in the pot while the orchid is doing its thing, hopefully. Again, I do not know if I'm way too late in the season. I do not know what's in the pot. I can answer that question straight away because we're gonna take her out of that pot, remove all the old bulbs. Maybe I might save some, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But you see, she's growing another growth right there. So we'll have to see. But anyway, let's answer the one question. Let's get her out of the pot and see what we need to clean up. The other question being, is she going to progress and grow any roots now, between now and before she goes dormant? That is something long-term, but I'm gonna switch the angle around. Let's get to it. She was doing great for two years. That's why I never switched her up. I owned, oh yes. At the beginning of the season, I did put her in a bigger pot thinking I'm going to get massive growth and she needs a bigger pot. Maybe that was a mistake because I did that while she was still asleep and I only cut the roots off halfway because they were still alive at the time, but now they are very, very dead. Very, very straw and yeah, absolutely useless which isn't a problem because basically what they can do, should do, normally do, is just rejuvenate their root system year by year. I have never repotted my catacetinae from year to year because I always think while there's room in the pot, you can stay, but it is absolutely not an issue just to go in, chop all the roots off even if they are still alive and just reset the orchid and wait for new roots to come and all that was part of the plan. New roots did come, but I guess they didn't like what they found at the surface of the lecker. Hmm. That is mineral and salt buildup because I do not flush these until such a time that they've leaved out and there shouldn't be any salt buildup on the surface of the lecker. However, miscalculating how long the roots are because clearly I can't see inside the pot because it is a white pot. Miscalculating how long the roots are could be why this has gone belly up because of the slow release fertilizer in here and then the salts would rise to the top by capillary action. And then the roots burn and then all the energy is going into creating the new growths, drawing everything out of the other pseudobulbs, and then <laughs> you come to this stage. But like I said, there is, you know, she might be set back, 
but I'm not concerned that she's not going to come through, pull through again next year. Just set back, which is a shame, but I am, like I said, I'm also somewhat like, ah, a kid in a candy shop wanting to try something different based on the results that I've seen with Stephen Van Camp and Lewis and his collection. So I'm just gonna keep pulling away unceremoniously. I'm going to try and be nice to the roots that are there in the hopes that they might just take off and do something. I doubt it. I think we're far too late in the season, but she's gonna wake up and be in the PET method next year. Now the idea for me was, because I've got two already prepared there, the idea for me was to like, you know, put two bulbs into one, one into the other. But I'm going to save the structures until they completely shrivel up and die of their own. So I'm going to be careful, but I do need to go in with some secateurs, I think, to divide her through the middle right here and hopefully save roots that have traveled to the back, or maybe not. Either way, let's take her apart and get you situated in this angle. Right. See how papery these are? And they were alive when I did the up pot at the beginning of spring. So that's why I didn't cut them all off, but they are dead now. But I want to, where are we going? We want to go through, oh, maybe I don't need the secateurs. Couldn't you have told me that sooner? <laughs> no, I'm going to, I don't want to be ripping around here. Let's see if we can protect a root. There we go. get in there where the growth early in the season growth died at the base and then she gave me another chance and here I am botching it up one more time poor thing right we are going to do the harakiri right here Now, at the beginning of the season, I could have done this, but again, I had live roots. I leave my catasetinae in the pot for as long as possible. I don't repot every year. But this is going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy watching this. I mean, at the end of the day, yep, she is set back, but hey, big deal. I'm anticipating them to be tough orchids and she'll be all right. But that is clear root fern right there from the salts when I started to flush too soon because all my catasetinae pots have slow release fertilizer in them. Right, next one. This is sunburn. That is not dormancy just yet. I'll take it off while we're at it. And then let's have a look at you and take all this off right here. Then we'll see, me and organic media. Woohoo! can you believe it? <laughs> and that's it. That's one piece and that's two pieces right there. Now, let me show you my organic media and why I even have it. This came from an order in 2018. It was in a separate box. So as a side note for anybody concerned with regards to the Fossarium box and all the orchids affected, this was in a separate box to that orchid in that order. But I bought this because I wanted to be 100% sure I had something to fall back on if, for example, my slipper orchids that I bought from that order objected to the Lekka and Semi-Hydro or the Lekka and Self-Watering. So I bought myself two bags of this, which is supposed to be for slipper orchids, as in German, Frauenschuh. But I've never used it because none of my slipper orchids objected. They objected to my neglect, but not to the Lekka self-watering or semi-hydro. So I still have this stuff, which has clearly got bark. And then there's some horticultural sponge. I don't know. I hope nobody showered with this and then decided to recycle it. But this is the one I'm going to use 
and I'm going to put that on top of the layer of lava rock I already have at the bottom. I know this is weird, huh? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> For me too, but I was always so... Ooh, after seeing Stephen Van Camp and Lewis's video many years ago, I was like, mm, I'm happy with my grow method. I don't want to change it, but I'm so curious to try what he did and, you know, just to see if that would work for me, which, I mean, why shouldn't it? It would be nice to have a super healthy Gattacetum orchid to start the process off with, but hey, you know what? You use what you got. You use what you got. And this is the moment. So yeah, I will leave the sponge and everything in there for added retention because, supuestamente, the next layer is sphagnum moss, which I also still have. But since I've been using hob material, mm -mm, no more sphagnum moss required. But I have some, so let's use it. Let's stuff that in there. According to the instructions, stuff it in tight. I'm all about stuffing tight, especially when it comes gets close to Thanksgiving, but that was in another life. So we're going to pack the top with sphagnum moss, nice and tight. Contrary to what I would have done in the past, we're going to do this the Stephen Van Camp and Lewis way. <laughs> Love it and make a huge mess in the lecker that I'm about to have to clean. But that's for tomorrow. Manana. When in Spain, manana. Love that kind of philosophy. Now, it's a good thing I left the little bulbs on at the end because I'm going to be able to use them to tie them onto my support. Let me get my wire in place. There we go. Let's help ourselves now with the wire just a little bit while we continue filling up the pot. Getting that sphagnum moss in there. Continuing with the concept of nice and tight. And anybody that is watching this at a later stage, this is now the middle of September. This is the time where this orchid should be going dormant. This is not the time to be doing this. Normally in my hemisphere, this all should be happening at around March, April, before the orchid wakes up. So disclaimer, this orchid is in dire need of rescue. And if there's a system that works for an orchid to get rescued, I will apply it until such a time that the orchid is strong again. And then I may go back to my preferred method of growing. Until that time, we are going with what is tried, tested, and proven. So let's make sure that she is stable because that's the next problematic thing that if they wobble around, then that's not a good thing while the roots are growing. There. <laughs> Oh yes, we can still add some more. Look at that, we can still add an inch. And here's another thing as well. I, I don't want media sitting around not being used in my home. I find that extremely wasteful. So this is helping out as well. I never ever opened the bag of the organic media. I wasn't needing it. It was just in storage. So we'll give this a go, even if it's late in the season. If she is going to go dormant, then yippee yay, -yay she will wake up in this. And I'm gonna deal with the other one off camera. I'll be back cleaned up and let's have another look-see. Did I get to them in time? I think so, even if they're gonna be set back. But this is so alien to me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And of course, I wanted my Jumbo Mickey just to be lush and gorgeous and, you know, not have it come to this. But I have to tell you that there's something inside of me that is just like, oh, I'm doing the PET method, you know, like some kind of a groupie here. <laughs> I'm very honest with you about that. Um, I could have bought myself another catacetum instead of doing this and get, letting it come to this. But you know what? It is what it is. We're going to give it a go. 
and I must say I'm quite liking the fact that I get to try it out. Now, we can dispute whether these candidates are the right ones. I am never going to knock the growing method of someone that has results like Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. I'm just glad that I can give it a go and we can probably see more in 2022 than we can this year. Whatever it is, it is done. Sphagnum moss, bark, <laughs> well, and lava rock, but we know lava rock and ninja orchids, so sphagnum moss and bark. Here we go. Fingers crossed it wasn't too late. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for being here. I appreciate your time. Hope this was entertaining, if nothing else. I'm not saying that my Lekka self-watering doesn't work. My other two are doing great. But in this case, I got the first flush timing wrong. And then the slow release fertilizer did its thing. It moved to the top and burnt the first roots that came out. And after that, no other roots wanted to come. Hardly surprising if the environment is not favorable. Have a wonderful day. Looking forward to 2022. We'll just put Jumbo Mickey for 2021 aside and say live and learn. PET method is a go. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.